welcoming so far Mr. AJ Vasco Sr. How's that sound saying that senior in high school? You're graduating hopefully this year, right, AJ? Yeah, yeah, no, school's uh, school's flowing by. It's been it's been a ride, yeah, it's been a ride. It's been one heck of a ride the last month or so for AJ Vasco from the Rink Academy. Let's before we get into this year, AJ, tell me about growing up with skates. Was it your main sport? Was it your first and only sport? Uh, when did you get introduced into uh, ice hockey? <sighs> um, my dad introduced me to ice hockey. Um, hockey's always been my first sport. I've loved it ever since I tied on my first pair of skates. Uh, I lived uh, lived when I was a bit younger in uh, Charles River Heights, and uh, ever since uh, I touched the ice there, I fell in love with the game. And uh, we ended up moving out to LaSalle here. And uh, that's when I really started off from there. So about four or five years old, the first pair of skates? Correct, yeah. yeah. Did your dad bronze them? Did he remember what they looked like? <sighs> I think they were a pair of Bauer Vapors, like 0 0.3 or something like that, like $20. Yeah, it did the job, right? So. Yeah, doesn't have to be the most expensive when you first start out. That's for sure. Sure. Yeah, they've changed a little bit probably since the skates you're currently wearing. I'm right. Quite a bit. Yeah, quite a bit. We're not going to uh, we're not going to put any disclaimers of what brands we're representing thus far. We'll get to that maybe later on. Yeah. Growing up, single A, double A, triple A hockey. Uh, what positions were you playing? Every position growing up, AJ, and what is why did you decide on the position you are today? Uh, as a kid, I was pretty versatile. I could play D, uh, center, wing. It honestly didn't matter. It's wherever the coach needed me. But um, yeah, even uh, even my uh, first year at AAA, going to AAA trials, driving up there with my dad, and uh, we're talking in the car. He's like, "What do you want to play? Like, D or forward?" And I'm like, "I don't even know." Like, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm like, "You know, I'll try forward." I ended up playing forward and never never switched back. But I, I still honestly probably could. But, but uh, no, I've, I've played five years now, so I think we're going to stick with it now. <laughs> yeah. So, like in the 40, you have a nose to the net. You're more of a passer, more of a shooter. Would you describe your gameplay? No, for sure. I've always been more of a make a play kind of guy. You know, I'm more of a passer, but. You know, that's something I'm trying to get or add into my game is, you know, don't always try to make that fast, but just trying to put the puck on net sometimes. Absolutely. So growing up, hockey was your number one. Tell me about the other sports you played in the off season. Like, obviously, there was back when you, I guess, when you did start playing hockey, hockey started becoming a 12-month sport, correct? So were there any other yeah. sports that you were introduced while you were playing? Um, when I was younger, Obviously, hockey was my number one, but I was uh, pretty big into baseball. A lot of the guys out here at McDonald, we had a pretty good ball team, so we were pretty competitive baseball players. So I think it was great, you know, something to get your mind off of, off of hockey for a few months in the summer, right? So um, I'd say my number one base or our number one hockey and uh, for sure baseball. I didn't really play any other sports. We were talking off camera about the Indians hat you're wearing and how you have not seen the movie Major League. <laughs> I think that's blasphemy if you're wearing a hat like that. I'm sure your father will give you a bit of an explanation on that one. Growing up, what was your favorite NHL team and what was your favorite baseball team? Uh, I'm a Toronto guy, so I'm a, uh, I'm a Toronto Blue Jays fan and a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. Okay. I'll let you yeah. slide with the Leafs. Blue Jays, I, I like. Do you, uh, you have a favorite baseball player? I don't know at the moment. I like Jose Altuve. Um, Even though he steals the signs? Pardon me? Even though he steals the signs? I'm okay with that. Okay. You got to do what you got to do to win, right? Um, yep. well, uh, I used to love Jose Batista, but obviously, you know. Um, I currently don't really have a fave. Um, no, nah, I wouldn't say I have an all-time fave, but those are two of my uh, two of the guys I like the most, for sure. So your first son is going to be named Jose after both of them, is that correct? I, I could work out, I guess, right? It, it, that, you have to talk about that one, yeah. Is Batista before or after the bat flip? Uh, 
right after the bat flip, I was a huge fan. I, already, I was already like fanboying on him for a bit, but like after the bat flip, he was for sure. Yeah, for sure, my favorite. He had a yeah. cannon from uh, right field too. You could throw people out. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, we're not <laughs> good, good. Let's no, switch no. it to hockey. Who, who do you model your game around most? You think? Model my game. Mm. I'd say I try to model my game after a player like like an Anze Kopitar, kind of like a you know an all around good defensive offensive player. Um, I try and be more physical sometimes. So I'd say another guy like who I love, or I know a lot of people hate, Brad Marchand. You know, super effective, right? Like hey, you, you, you hate to win against them. You love having on your team, right? So. I think that's kind of my story too. <laughs> I, you know what, you're if you're absolutely right. My generation, it was Claude Lemieux for the Montreal Canadiens. Miss the fact that Brandon's no longer with the Jets. He takes a lot of penalties, but Brad Marchant, the quintessential smart man that gets just under your skin enough to hate him. But like you said, you'd love to have him on your team for sure. Yeah. Let's uh, let's take a quick break here, AJ, and we'll come back. We'll talk about the final year here with the Rank Academy here on On the Ice. Perfect. Good job. You doing okay? All good. Right on, man. We're going to get back out of here in two seconds. Sounds good. AJ Vasco joining me here on the ice on Amateur Sports TV. AJ, this senior year, talk about the transition you had to make. Is this your first year with the Rink Academy? This is my third year. Yeah, this is my third year. So how was it the trend? What was it about the Rink Academy that attracted you to becoming one of their showcase players in three years? Uh, obviously, uh, coming into the rink, I was uh, on E15s my first year. They already had one year prior to that. And uh, there was a bunch of talented, good hockey players there. Um, you know, I was always kind of, I always thought in my head, you know, I have a pretty cool playing with some of those guys. So, uh, you know, they're going out to Alberta and BC and getting showcased quite a bit. So, you know, a lot of talk and, uh, I was uh, thankfully asked to come play on the 15 team, and uh, no, it was uh, it was phenomenal. It was, uh, very, it was a very cool experience for me, and uh, I couldn't get enough of it. And so, I ended up going back there for another two years, and uh, you know, I definitely do not regret the decision for sure. Absolutely, talk about the chemistry you built with the boys in the locker room and on the ice. How important and how in, how important is that not only for your play, but also for your confidence with the guys knowing you got the crew playing for a couple of years on the ice. Yeah, no, we're, uh, we're seeing each other every single day for seven, eight hours. You know, like we all, like we all became best friends. Like it was, you know, you go to school, there's your boys, right? Like you go, you go to hockey, there's your boys, you know, like you're, they're just, they're your best, they're your brothers. You know what I mean? Like you guys are all, you're all so tight. You, you know, you're, you're willing to block a shot whenever you need to, you're willing to, you know, like you, your best friends, like you will, you will do anything for that guy. You know, I think that's another important part about the academy is that you guys are, you know, melded all into each other. You know, what I mean, like you guys are all, you know, like best friends. You guys are willing to do anything for each other, and I think that's super important, especially with hockey, right? You know, you guys all want to be on the same page. You guys all have the same goal, right? You guys all the same outcome. So I think, uh, I think it's just super important that way for sure. I've never asked this question before, and it's not on my list. I do apologize, AJ. Going from the facility, the training center that was off Los and Crescent there, now into the rink training center that it is now. Uh, different, yes. An upgrade, absolutely. What do you miss about the old building that the new building doesn't have? Uh, it was – I used to train there when I was a kid before RHA was even a thing. So, I mean, it was – it was pretty, uh, pretty ideal. I mean, it was, it was small, you know, you work on your own stuff. I'm sure. You miss how it was back and, uh, it wasn't as big. Like it wasn't as, uh, like people wasn't as popular. I'm sure. It was pretty popular, but not like it is right now. You know, the one on McIlvery is booming. So, uh, it was nice that it was small. Right. And, you know, not too big. You knew everybody. Right. Yeah, so I guess, uh, you kind of miss how it was back in the day, but I mean, they're doing a phenomenal job now. And, uh, no, I can't complain. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty damn nice. So I, I will say I've been to the RTC several times, 
that weight room you have access to is uh, glorious. It's phenomenal. I mean, talk about the resources you have access to uh, when you're on an off-ice training at the RTC. Well, I don't know the statistic, but uh, they have the Kaiser machines, those air press ones, and those are those are phenomenal. Like I don't know, if, I don't think very many gyms have that in Canada. Never mind, you know, North America. Like I don't, I don't think uh, they're pretty. Uh, they're pretty cool machines. Like they're uh, all air pressure. They're you know, you press a button, goes up to the air. You don't have to worry about lifting anything. You don't have to worry about stacking anything. It's phenomenal, and the people they have hired there, like Matt Adamson and and uh, some of his employees, they're, they're phenomenal. They know what they're doing, and uh, they're all on the same page. And uh, it's really world class for sure. No doubt. So your normal day, AJ, you said like you spend eight hours with the boys in classes at the rink. What time does your day start and what goes on till you finish and you're on your way to bed? Let's see if we get AJ back here in a sec. Just. Um, I uh, about 20 minutes from school, so I'll drive to school in the morning at around, I try and get up around 7.45, and I'll get there around, you know, 8.15, give or take, try and be there a bit earlier, and uh, my class starts, my first class starts. Till 10:50, and then 10:50 till 12. And then, if you have your license or not, you drive to the rink, and then you get on the ice around 1, 1:30, or you or you work out, and then you sw you do a little flip flop there, and so that takes you. And then you do study right after, right? Because that's super important, especially with the academy too. They value the schoolwork and hockey. So I'd say our day ends around 4:30. You head home eat some dinner, do some homework, and uh, head to bed. And all over, repeat, hit the repeat button, 7.30 in the morning. You got there it. There you go. Yeah. How does the academy prepare you for the next level, AJ? And by I mean that, the idea of a student athlete. Well, the academy prepares you for the next level. Just, you know, you're working all the time. You know I mean, at the next level, you're not. If if you want to make it to the next level, you're gonna to have to be working on all the time. You have to get any upper hand on anybody, right? So you have to be working all the time. Um, you know, the travel schedule is very tough. You know, you're playing two, three, four games on the weekend, which uh, can beat your body up pretty bad. And uh, you know, long bus trips back. You know, 13, even 16 hour bus trips. Um, and on the school uh, aspect of that, they're uh, always on you. You have to maintain a certain GPA. Um, so they're on you for school. Um, it really, it really, um, helps you. I'm sure it's going to help you for when, you know, you, you get to that next level. Say you're playing, you know, college hockey or something like that. And, uh, you know, you gotta maintain, you know, school and hockey. Right. So I think they do a great job of that. And that's super important for, uh, for, um, <clears throat> being a student athlete, you know, you gotta manage, you gotta manage time. Well, right. You gotta manage your time with training. Manage your time with hockey, and uh, if you can't do that, yeah, you're not going to play college hockey. Nope. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, AJ, what is your time management level like? <laughs> with my mom, it's probably a 10. Without my mom, it's probably a 4. But What about dad? Was dad involved here? Uh, no, probably play ping pong or something. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hand-eye coordination. That that works around yeah. the net. You need that. Yeah, for sure. You know, I'm... I tell every every little skill you learn off the ice is important. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the year on the ice. Uh, the crew's coming back. The boys are back. Was there a certain feeling that you knew you had a good squad this year to make a playoff and get into the playoffs with uh, you know a promising uh, finish? Uh, from I guess during R one in the off season, I've already made my commi commitment to come back, and. Uh, my assistant coach there, Ian Duvall, told me we were getting Matthew Savoy. And I already knew we had a good, squ a good squad before that. And so after he told me that, I realized, I'm like, holy moly, we could actually do some damage here. 
And so uh, I think, you know, the got the word got out to the boys there and we got pretty fired up and uh no, he didn't uh he definitely uh, satisfied us for sure. He was a he was a hell of a player. And uh, you know, it was nice plan. It was nice plan with him for sure. And so I think all the boys kinda rallied behind behind him and behind myself and behind Sudak Acne there and we really had a good squad. Um you know, it was uh it's pretty heart wrenching at the end there when uh when the uh, virus shut it down, but uh, you know, it was uh, we we understood it, right? Like, you know, obviously this is bigger than hockey, so we have to understand that, and you know, it's the way it goes. You couldn't have said it any better. Uh, when you're in two games into your finals and you get that note saying we're all shut down, it's got to be bitter. It's got to be a certain taste in your mouth and a certain gut wrenching feeling, and your heart kind of stops, but. Like you said, you realize it's uh, there's bigger things to deal with as we grow up. We're going to come right back with AJ just after this. We're going to talk about what he's doing to prepare for the next level today. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back. Last segment, man. You good? Sounds good. Am I flying through this too fast? You're all good. Am I missing anything? You're hitting the hammer. Okay, here we go with hammer down number three. Sitting down with AJ Vasco. AJ, it's a little bit of a different situation as we know it. We're supposed to be back at school next week. We're not. Things are closed down. We're in a bit of an isolation right now. What are you doing uh, to maintain your edge? Uh, first off, we'll talk off the uh, out of the classroom. What are we doing on in terms of uh, preparation to keep your skills on the right edge? Uh, I have a lot of schoolwork to be doing. I got two online courses. So I got uh, some online courses I'm finishing up here, trying to get ahead of it. Um, Hockey-wise, I'm working out every day. My dad's helped me uh, go through a workout we made. So uh, I've been super busy doing that, you know, once once a day every week. Um, I got the garage. I cleaned up the garage, got her going, shooting some pucks, and now staying loose. So I think, I mean, this is either the time right now with this virus where you're going to, you know, try and – stay on pace a little bit better or you're going to completely fall back, right? And I think I kind of realize that, and I'm sure a lot of guys have. So you're trying to stay ahead of the game right now, right? So, I mean, it's tough for sure, but you can kind of use it to your advantage, I guess, right? You uh, Did you find any uh, targets for the garage to use? <laughs> I got a, uh, I got a big, uh, I guess a big shooting tarp out there. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty beat up, but... You know, I, it, it does the job, so. It's only, it's no windows it anywhere? Uh, there's a broken window in the back. We don't talk about that. <laughs> it wouldn't be a hockey discussion if we didn't play the game top shelf where the crossbar is in the same sight line as a rear window of the garage, correct? Correct, yeah. Like, I've, I've replaced my window about four times in my life. It yeah. says that no, a really that good one. shot bar down, but not bar up. Yeah, no, my dad uh, gave up fixing that window after, like, the fourth time. So he's uh, he's just letting her hang to dry now. There it is. Good. So the tarp is there. Uh, what part of your game do you have to keep working on, if you can, during this uh, isolation period? Uh, well, with my workouts, I'm trying to add some footwork, some speed. I think that's a big part of my game that, you know, is not – I wouldn't say it's a uh, – a downside in my game, but I can certainly bring it up, which would help me a ton. Uh, I don't know, getting, uh, getting some, getting some bigger legs for sure to, you know, help with foot speed on the ice and acceleration. And I just think, uh, you know, you can never, you can never, not stop working on speed. No, you can always have more speed. Yep, for sure. So that's something I'm kind of keen in on, and I've been doing it for the last few years, and I've noticed a big increase. So I'm just going to continue doing that and. Absolutely. Are you a Letter Kenny fan? <laughs> Been told I should be on the show a couple times. I was no, just uh, gonna say you could fit in <laughs> line mates with Jonesy and Shorzy if you wanted to. <laughs> you and Riley no, and Jonesy could be great. Yeah. No, I haven't really got into it. Um, but no, I've been told a few times there. Yeah. Well, maybe that'll be the life after uh, your next uh, step in this career of yours, AJ. When did you start looking into the BCHL, the Alberta Junior Hockey League, and when did you decide on the BC being your next potential place to go next year? Um, since day, since I joined RHA, I knew 
at some point I'd get opportunities to come out west. So I kind of just stayed patient with that. Uh, me and my dad have talked about it for forever. You know, how, how cool would it be to go out west, you know, play junior hockey. And, you know, I, BC is, you know, it is the best junior A league in Canada. You know, it has been for many years. And, you know, like Alberta is one hell of a league too. You know, they're both two big beasts. So, you know what, like I was really happy to go to either or for sure. And uh, uh, Cranbrook reached out to me there, I want to say three, four months ago. And, uh, you know, gave me the option. And uh, yeah, I talked about it for a while and it was pretty hard to pass up. You know, like they're, uh, they're going to have some holes to fill. There's going to be some big roles to play. They got a really good coach there, Ryan Donald, coached in Yale for a bit. And, uh, you know, they're owned by Scotty Niedermeyer, so that's pretty neat. He's uh, a pretty good hockey player, wouldn't you say? Yeah, no, he's not, he's not bad for sure. Uh, and uh, I've heard nothing but great stuff there from uh, the, the town of Groundbrook and uh, and uh, the facility is phenomenal. Uh, my buddy Carson Lambos played when uh, Kootenai Ice were there, so he kind of yeah. filled me in on the town there. So uh, he's had nothing but great things to say too. So they're missing junior hockey and uh, – I think we're pretty excited to bring it back to him. It's a pretty interesting – I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because Carson, who now plays with the Winnipeg Ice, who was a very quick draft pick for the Kootenai Ice back then in the day when they were playing there, did he talk to you like about how important that junior hockey is for a small town and how you could be, like, for lack of a better term, like the heir apparent, the return of a Winnipegger back to – Cranbrook, not to fill the shoes of Carson, but to introduce a new set of skates to uh, Cranbrook. Well, uh, no, I mean he's uh, he's for sure brought up that they're diehard hockey fans. You know, they're uh, they're a town and lives and breathes hockey, right? So he says it's just a cool atmosphere. You know, they uh, they love their players, they love their hockey, and uh, I guess that yeah, that definitely helped my decision for sure to you know push her over the line. To you know, how cool would it be to bring back some junior Absolutely. hockey in Cranbrook for sure? Yeah. You're going to have some seats in the stands watching you guys progress as a team. What part of your game do you think is best suited for Cranbrook's team and those holes, like you said, that need to be filled? For sure. I'm Like I said way back there, uh, I'm pretty versatile. You know, I can play up the middle. I can play on the wing. You know, I can be physical. You want me to shoot? You want me to, you want me to make moves? You want me to move the puck, right? So I can – I can do it. So I think, uh, you know, whether it's playing on the second line, the third line, you know, it doesn't matter where they put me, but I will, uh, I'll bring a complete game for them for sure. And uh, I can promise them that. Yeah. So you got a two on one. Are you shooting? Or are you passing? And I'll probably throw a pump fake and then slide her over for an easy tap in. That's there we go. Okay. Good answer. Yeah. Good answer. What number do you want to wear? <laughs> Is there been a special number in the family? Like, I mean, um, it used to be number 19. He used to love okay. the number. And then I'm like, you know what? Let's switch it up. So, my first year of RHA, I wore number 27. 27. Like, kind of a weird number. It's kind of different. I'm like, well, why not? Let's just try wearing it. So, I wore it. I ended up loving it. Don't know why. Just did. And I uh, wore it for all three years of Rink Hockey Academy. And uh, hopefully, I can wear it in Cranbrook. <laughs> 27 has been worn by, I believe, Jeremy Roenick and a Ron Hextall. Do you have a little bit of fire in your eye like both of those players, seeing the 27? I haven't dropped the mitts yet, but um, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm You can't drop the mitts now. No, um, for sure. I mean, I love winning. So, I mean, I, I love winning, you know. Like, uh, there's one thing I can say about myself is for sure I – Love winning. We won provincials as kids there playing minor hockey. Won it in AAA. Came ever so close first year of rank. And, uh, no, I've never uh, – I, I love winning. I'll do whatever it takes to win. So, I think that's one thing all those guys have in common as well. I know they're winners. They're, uh, they're tenacious. They're, uh, they're willing to do anything it takes. So, I'd say uh, a little bit of – I guess it didn't really affect my number choice, but I guess it kind of goes along with it for sure. <laughs> Your decision perhaps to go to the BCHL as opposed to staying here in Manitoba for right now, what was the main attraction outside of the the talent and you know the amount of players that go to the BCHL that get further into their career? Was that the main contributing factor as to why you chose to go out west? 
No, it, it definitely was, especially being out there over the last three seasons in Alberta and BC. You realize you go to a few games and you realize how fast it is and how different it is compared to other junior leagues. And, uh, you know, like, like you said, there are a lot of players that are going to those leagues or, you know, coming out with NCAA Division One scholarships. And uh, that's definitely somewhere I want to be. So if they're if I'm following the footsteps of them, I guess I'm going the right way. So. Absolutely. No, you're, you're putting yourself in the right direction and the right place, AJ. Congratulations, Cranbrook Rucks. I think they're going to have a, a very special place for you come next year if this season actually starts on time. I have to ask you a couple of quick questions, uh, right. personal questions, not so personal, but personal. Whose cooking is better, mom or dad's? Depends what we're cooking. Actually, that's in 90% my mom. But my dad makes the odd good steak, so I'll give him that. So the pregame dinners are for pregame dinners are uh, mom's making it. Mom's making like some fettuccine alfredo or something like that. Okay, and if dad's if dad's cooking something on the grill, it's got to be a steak. And then uh, I got to ask you one more question. Yeah. You're afraid of heights. My afraid of heights. Sorry, keep cutting out. Sorry about that. Are you afraid of heights right now, AJ? Oh no, you get <laughs> no, I wouldn't say I'm too afraid of heights. Okay. Uh, I, I got a plan to go skydiving at some point here, so I'm gonna try to get that done. <laughs> okay, it's on the bucket list. Uh, favorite place you've gone to travel or play hockey? Travel or play hockey? That's my favorite favorite place to travel. I haven't been, you know, too many places. My auntie has a place in Vegas there. She lives down in Vegas. So I'd say that's my favorite place to travel for sure. And uh, I love going to uh, Victoria with the boys there when we were traveling for hockey. That was for sure a, a fun trip. That was uh, It was nice. It was super nice. Are you more of a uh, snowboarder or skier? Snowboarder. Okay, yeah. so you're going right – you're going to be going into, you know, Wondertown come wintertime there if they allow you yeah. on a board. Well, yeah, you'll see me there for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. Uh, AJ, I hope you have a chance to catch up with friends and family and keep busy as you always do. Uh, favorite exercise part of your regime? Is it legs? Is it chest? Is it buys? What's the part you want to tell those little kids to make sure that they've got uh, going at all times? I, uh, I'm sure they hear this all the time, but you can't stress enough. It's your legs. It's your legs. It's your legs. Your legs are, uh, it's what drives you, right? So you need them. So that's, uh, that's the main focus of me for sure. Um, you know, legs and core, those are uh, two very important ones. So that's something I kind of focus on, you know, making pushed out hurts. So that's Perfect. definitely why I key in on for sure. Besides sports, and uh, what's your next favorite hobby to do when you're not thinking about playing hockey? Um, at the moment, Right now, I'd say uh, we got the ping pong set up out back, so I'm I'm ripping ping pong all day. Okay, I'm getting no pretty piano? good. Oh, I hate piano. All my siblings play piano there. <laughs> that's not. That's definitely not you tickling no, I'm, ivories. Uh, I'm not a very good pianist, that's for sure. You tickle iron. You don't tickle ivories. <sighs> I can't even tell you that is. <laughs> Perfect. I'm gonna leave you on this last one, AJ. If you had to. When you do go to Cranbrook or when you do go into your next level, is your whole family going to go with you, do you think, to make sure you're set up properly? Or are you independent enough to go on your own? I, uh, I'm i I'm definitely going to be going on my own. I'm, I'm sure they'll help me for a little bit. But uh, I got three other siblings here, and, uh, you know, they need some help too. So um, I'll be going on my own for sure. Are you the oldest of the four? I am. Yeah, I got a younger sister – a younger brother and another younger sister. Okay, so the younger brother or the younger sisters, are they still playing hockey? Or do they play hockey? Um, my one sister is 16, and she does not play hockey. And my brother, who's what is he, like 11, 10, 11, 12, something like that, he plays hockey. He's a, he's a good hockey player. Okay. And, uh, and my uh, younger sister is probably the best hockey player. She's like eight. She's a... Uh, She's pretty talented. She's pretty That's good. Right on. So there's talent in the Vascos. Once one leaves the house, the three will remain. They'll be uh, shining, yeah. There you go. All right, AJ, thank you very much for joining up with me and taking the time to uh, discuss uh, 
not only what happened this year, but your future endeavors. Uh, again, stay on the course. You're doing a great job. We'll catch up with you. Uh, hopefully in the new year when the season actually starts in the fall, we're hoping. Awesome. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it, Theo. Right on, AJ, with me on the ice here on Amateur Sports TV.